Dot, 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 dot. Mind pump time. All right. Welcome to the best podcast in the world. We've got a great giveaway. Again, this is what we do every single time we drop an episode on this channel. By the way, I got some bad news. Half of you watching this video have not subscribed to this channel. What's wrong with your face? Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you want to win Maps Prime for free, that's what we're giving away right now. Here's what you do. Leave a comment, and if we pick your comment, if we think it's the best comment, we'll notify you in the comments, which means you have to subscribe and, and you have to turn on notifications. Otherwise, you won't know. We'll let you know that you won a free program. Also, we are running a sale. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, all 50% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy this podcast. God, I forgot Father's Day is this weekend coming up already. It huh? is, dude. Yeah. Mm. It totally the is. The most, yeah, it's, overlooked. It's the other day. <laughs> the most overlooked holiday ever. Yeah, it's like Mother's Day, and then, yeah, oh, yeah, that's everyone, right. Like, everybody has to remember Mother's Day. Yeah, oh, that's, that's right. That's Father's a day. fact. Oh, what do we need to get, Dad? New Balance? Yeah. I've been what do you want to do, Dad? Get, like, a steak or something? <laughs> and then that's it. That's the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I've been sending uh, Katrina links to things that I want for, like, the last six months. We'll see if she remembers. No, you haven't. Wow. What have you, well, okay, tell us what you've been I sending. I like that. You've been planting seeds. Yeah, a little like there was like a goggles for a drone. There was like a jacket that I wanted. Uh, I think some shoes that I wanted. Bro, are you going to get into that drone racing where you have the VR? I mean, so I, I, you're like a 16 year old kid in a, in a grown man's. I body. love it, dude. Well, that's my love language. The toy bro. Guy. That's my love language. So, and what I do to help my partner out because I know <laughs> I have to be a pain in the ass to buy for because I buy most shit that I want. When I see something, I'm like, I want that, but I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, good gift. Mm -hmm. you know, that's so, and I and I was like, send him to her but she didn't normally do yeah i'm curious because courtney already bought me something it's this big box and she's like she can't handle that i that i can't open it right now like she doesn't like surprises and all that i'm just like i'm not gonna open it till the actual day at least but i'm very curious because she did this on her own and she never does that she's like me that's how that's how when i buy a gift i'm like do you want it now yeah because i don't like waiting she's like mm, like anticipating yeah. like what my response well uh, so far now, does that make you that makes me nervous it does when someone is like i you know me right yeah. so you guys already know my my background on like getting receiving gifts and then on top of that like if someone's like really excited to give it yeah. to me then it's just like it builds it up way too well much. Yeah. i'm like you i've been i've sense. been tainted because of uh getting a bunch of like used stuff because i was like the younger sibling and it was always like here's the recycled version of what you were asking for yeah. <laughs> like thanks <laughs> you get your brother's old jacket yeah. i you, uh, i don't really care about gifts that much but i do like acts of service so i do like you know like waking up and the kids wake me up with something and Jessica does something nice yeah, for it's me. It's nice when you're acknowledged. But gifts, I don't care because yeah. if I want something, I'll buy it. And I'm not really a things kind of person. Although Jessica's so upset because she screwed up a surprise a little bit. We were having dinner last night and I'm like, oh man, Father's Day is this Sunday. Like I totally forgot. And, and Jessica's like, yeah, or, you know, uh, make sure the kids can stay with us because it's going to be the week that they're with their mom. And, she's, and I'm like, what time should I get them? She goes, well, they're going to be making dinner for you. So make sure. And then my daughter's like, Jessica. That's a surprise. And Jessica's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Felt so bad. So, well, But apparently love, there's another surprise. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I love surprising uh, Courtney, though. That's uh, because, especially if it's like totally random. And like I mentioned a while ago, I was like a little bit in the doghouse. So I already put my order in. Uh, and basically put out, uh, you know, she's going to be receiving flowers. I'm oh, give that a try. Oh, so you, I got that too. Oh, yeah, you guys did it. Huh? I did. The, the Stunning Beauty. So we'll see if it's Oh, got, that's the name of it. your bouquet? Yeah. 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 I got the Ruby Rose bouquet, and it's red roses. I like purple. It's my favorite color, right? So yeah. red roses and purple. I don't know what other flower it is, but it looks really nice. It's like 40 bucks. I'm not going to tease Same day delivery. Purple being your favorite color right now. I'm more curious about the flowers because this is something that we're testing, right? So the audience knows this is... Uh, this may or may not be a future partnership. Now, I assume that we probably have a lot of guys that are also good dudes that like to take care of their wives or their partners right. or their girlfriends or whatever and would do this. And I think it's such a killer deal, and I love the way they set this all up. So this may be something we keep. If it is, I've worked out a deal for our, our uh, listeners so at the end, Sal will do his normal, like, you know, share with yeah. our uh, the coupon link is. 
I really want to see if our audience responds. If they like it and they respond, it's a, it'll be a partnership that we pursue. If it falls flat, then so we're like testing. It. I'm yeah. just using it then. So far, I, I like. like it. I love the idea of it just to uh, do because I I'm always thinking like, man, like I, I haven't uh, done anything like for for my spouse in a, in a while. Like uh, just acknowledging it and like just a little thing like that goes a long way. Yeah. So we used to live right next to before, like right next to a floral shop, and I actually had like this routine, like at least once a month i would go in there and i would i would build this bouquet out and i would i would bring That's it home nice. so it was a, something i continually to do well now we don't have that right by me so this is what made me look for a service that okay well maybe i can just get be a lot easier for me just to now, have it delivered now are you guys are you guys into flowers in other words if you got it if you came home and then you had flowers sent to you is that or or if not what would you like nah, sent to you? unless it's like venus flytrap or something you know, oh. like, like, like it could kill like like flies did you have you ever buy, bought those <laughs> yeah you could buy those sometimes i did that because i wanted to show my kids because uh i'm like dude these things are cool dude, dude. they're freaking rad yeah they're so rad. I've never seen one. You've never seen them? No. So they have like a little, it's like a little hair in inside the, 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 I don't know if it's the flower or the plant. And if it gets triggered, I think there's two hairs. Two hairs have to get triggered. Mm -hmm. It literally it snaps up. Collapses. It, like, it looks like it has teeth, but it's just, you know, it's just plants. It's just and <laughs> it'll capture the fly and then it'll digest it. And so what we used to do is I would buy them. I would get a fly, catch a fly, and I'd take its wings off so it didn't fly or whatever. And then I'd put it on. <laughs> You're it's gonna, so cruel. It's yeah. going to die anyway. <laughs> and then I'd put it on the plant and you'd see it walk across. And as soon as it triggers the two hairs, psh, it would close. And the Venus I put a spider up. in it. Did I? Yeah, I always used to fuck with spiders. Oh man! Oh uh, yeah. So I used to watch spiders. it. I've never seen it work. I've never seen yeah. one actually. That, where do you get them at? Uh, I, I used to be able to get them at the know. grocery store. Yeah, I used to go at like lumber yards that had like garden sections. Like I could find some there and. Also, you you could buy like huge bags of ladybugs, and so I used to do pranks with that as well. So you buy this huge bag of ladybugs and like throw in somebody's car, you know? Wow, like that's that. a <laughs> what a dick! <laughs> they that would always suck. open the doors like <laughs> yeah. That's a that's the prank that keeps on giving. Uh, yeah. yeah, you yeah, know that what? Was a fun one. We just came up with a brilliant idea, absolutely brilliant. Okay, because flowers is big business, and I, and the majority of the recipients of flowers are Bro, women. I want right? like dangerous uh, plants. Now, exactly. Yeah. Imagine if they had flowers for men, yeah. but it was stuff like that, like, it's like venomous. I'm cool. I'm cool with getting like, flowers. You know? Are you really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Would, that's true. You would yeah, be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. also painted <laughs> what, your that, what does that mean? I would be. Well, you're that? like a girl. In, uh, in many ways, I like so I like a nice house and I like my house to smell good and look good and so like you know flowers <laughs> flowers make yeah. that happen. You know what I'm saying flowers make it smell good and I look just, good. I'm like, good morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm picturing Adam right now like he's he's at home he's getting the bathtub ready with the candles. Yeah. You know? Ding dong. He's like, what's that? And he goes yeah. out in his robe. He's got the music. Yeah. Yeah. Bouquet of flowers. He, he opens it. Oh my god! This <laughs> what a I can't oh. believe. Who's it from? Doug yeah. calls up Doug. Doug, just, thank you. Just, just huffing it. You know. The thought. Mm. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. It's very, very nice. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, that's nice. Yeah, no flowers. Flowers are nice. Jessica appreciates them uh, quite a bit. So yeah, how are your wives? Are your wives like big? Because some some oh, some women don't even it. give a shit. They don't care. Jessica probably. loves it. You know, her mom used to own a floral shop. Oh no way! Yeah, and and she, her mom was like an expert on plants, on all plants. Wow. So it's kind of cool. So when whenever I we'd go visit her. We'd see some cool plant, and she'd tell me, "Oh, that's a whatever." And then you'd have to take care of it. So there's a lot that goes into. Mm -hmm. you know. What's the What's the title of that? It's in Meet the Fockers. Remember, that's what he is. He's a CIA agent, but he's he's uh, he is calls it a florist? botanist or oh, something. Uh, is it a botanist? Is that, is that what it is? I Maybe. Don't know. I don't you, know. you know what else I used to be able to buy? So there were Venus flytraps, which is cool. Did you ever buy Mexican jumping beans? They call them. Yeah. Those are. Have you ever seen those, Adam? Hella racist. No, they're not. That's what they were called. They're yeah. fun, dude. <laughs> have you ever bought them? No, yeah. I haven't. They're like in a little bag, and then they yes, you know what makes them jump? Rattle. You yeah. know what makes them jump? There's a little larva, the larva yeah. inside, and literally, if you put them on the table, they jump. Yeah, they're so weird. That is weird. But there's a worm inside of them. Yeah, so and then you get you. It's the same. The, the same store probably has those like little pouches that like claim it has a snake in it, and you try to open it, it has like a wound up rubber band yes. that like snaps at you. Speaking of uh, meat eating plants, there's I don't know where this plant is, but there's one plant. It's huge, and it's got this big like funnel like thing, and it eats animals, yeah. not like bugs. Like a bird will get trapped in it. And the way that it's designed... Is that the one that smells like shit like, like for miles? Maybe. There is a plant that smells like rotting flesh. Just also. rotting. Yeah. 
You didn't know that? No. There's yeah. literally a plant that smells like it's huge rotting flesh, and it attracts animals. Maybe you're right because it smells like rotting flesh. It attracts animals. Yeah, like birds and stuff will birds, fly to it. Like yeah, vermin go in there, and they'll get trapped. They'll go down this death. this like plant, and because of the way that the plant is is obviously designed. Once they crawl down, they can't come back up, yeah. and then they just- They, like, drown or something, and, and it's It digests juice. them. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. Doug's pulling up a picture right now. I know it. Wow. It's it's a crazy plant. I think oh. it's in, yeah, it's in some kind of, like- That's it right there. What is the name of that? It's a killer plant, but we don't know what the name of it. It's weird. Yeah. Can you believe shit like that even exists? I, I yeah, think like it's where? cool. It's, like, from another planet. Oh, oh yeah. you know what? That reminds me. Um, Somebody DM me about what we were- sp- talking about with loki mm. it's called uh retro futurism oh okay. well, that makes sense that's, that's cool th- that's what that style is called that's cool Remember when we were trying to figure that out that makes perfect sense i know mm-hmm. it does right yeah because it's it's future but it's what the future would be thought of in the past yes yeah, so it's yeah. its own timeline so they can basically do whatever they want with yeah, it. yeah right? and we've seen this before right i mean mm-hmm. we were talking about the different examples of it so i knew there had to have been like a name for it I, so. justin hit the nail yeah. on the head when he said it was like future land in disneyland uh, like yeah. that's exactly what the style uh, felt like. That's what it reminded me of in that movie. Yeah. Did I tell you guys the conspiracy theory controversy around the supplement NAC? Did I bring that up on the podcast? Oh, that no. it's now banned because it was like a valid treatment. Is that the dude? So Doug, what does conspiracy? NAC stand for? It's N acetylcysteine or th- something like thank that. Thank you. Okay, so this is a supplement that's been sold as a supplement, very inexpensive. For over two decades, you could buy any supplement store online. It's in liver support supplements. It's just very common supplement that people have been taking forever. All of a sudden, the FDA comes out and says, "Uh uh-uh, this is now going to be a prescription. It's banned. Now, their rationale is that NAC was originally designed as a pharmaceutical. So that's what they're saying. Although it's been sold as a supplement for two decades, it's, it's extremely oh, safe. Yeah, I've seen this. And there's no problems. Of course you have. It's been around forever. So here's the controversy. Here's a conspiracy theory. Studies were coming out showing that NAC could be a viable potential treatment for COVID. Mm-hmm. So they were, studies were showing that people with severe COVID supplementing would supplement with NAC and it would really reduce symptoms and increase uh, survivability. <laughs> so all of a sudden the FDA slaps it or the, they pull it off a of shelf. It's Bro. so crazy. That, I mean, that's the conspiracy, but that's dude, fucked up. Any competition to the vaccines is, well, is going to get pulled. Or any competition to any drug. Well, yeah. Is going to get pulled. From pharmaceutical companies. Well, that's the thing too. And like, have we gone back and, and, <laughs> and finally admitted that hydrochloroquine has some like relevance in terms of treatment just because Trump said it, like everybody was against it. Yeah, that was actually they, a study just came out that showed that for severe symptoms of COVID, it seems like hydrochloroquine uh, is got that, some that was the most validity. appalling thing I saw with the like everything that went on. It's like, okay, so a valid scientific treatment that they've used, uh, you, you know, like for in the medical community for a long time, for all decades. of a sudden now it's politicized. Yeah, it's weird. I had like, a what? so I had a uh, I, I you know, I used to train a lot of doctors and one and I keep in contact with one of them and he told me that it used to be very easy for him to prescribe hydrochloroquine anytime he had a patient that was hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine Thank sorry for, i yeah. made up the name apparently we, we both screwed. hydroxychloroquine we just pulled the trump right i there know sure. dumb, whatever. <laughs> his exactly good drink it. bleached <laughs> yeah. no problem his he he said he used to prescribe it so easily like if he had a, a patient that would be flying out of the country or very easy he'd call it in the pharmacy they, they would prescribe it no questions asked. It's been around forever. It's in, again, decades we've been prescribing. And then he said after COVID happened, he it was like if he asked the pharmacy to prescribe it, nope, we're not going to. All of a sudden, he could not get them to give it to anybody because like, it got so politicized. How messed up is that? So frustrating. So crazy. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of uh, kind of weirdness, um, have you guys heard of this like dry scooping pre-workout controversy that's going on? I heard someone died. Yeah. What? Right? Yeah. So this is like something that's trending right now. Yes. So I, I want to- uh, That's t- been around forever though. Dry scooping- that. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, there's there's obviously people taking videos of them doing it and posting it yeah. <clears throat> on social media. Right? Yeah, so there was this girl. She was in her 20s, and I guess it was this TikTok challenge to dry scoop pre-workout. Uh, see, there you go. And it gave her a heart attack, and she died. Now, here's the problem that I have. The articles that I'm reading, because there's lots of articles, and people have been sharing them with me left and right in my DMs. The problem is the articles are focusing on the dry scooping part and not on the ingredients in the pre-workout. Oh, By the yeah. way, 
Take pre-workout dry or mix it in water. Same fucking thing. It doesn't matter. The dry scooping has nothing to do with right. what made it deadly. Right. It's the fact that it's she probably took 700 milligrams of caffeine <laughs> and a bunch of other shit that's in there. Yeah. But they're making a big deal about the fact that it's like like somehow taking it in powder form versus mixing it in water is what's that's what they're alluding to, which is false. That's stupid. Dumb. It was just one though, right? Did you hear any more cases? Was there more cases? There was that one, and then there wasn't there another one where some somebody had like uh, brain inflammation from taking too much, some other kid or whatever. At some point, I feel like uh, energy drinks and pre workout supplements are going to be uh, targeted by the yeah. FDA. That's well, I, I mean, caffeine is is always like, and they had the caffeine that was in just pure powder form that you could buy off the internet oh, and, that's and right. kids were doing that and, and um, getting severely uh, someone died yeah they went to the hospital and some died it's just like that's one of the it's a real drug especially when, it, when you take it in, in a, a high qu- uh, quantity of yeah, it it's was really, a, really damaging there was a kid that bought uh, powdered caffeine did the calculations wrong so he forgot to move a decimal he thought he was taking 200 milligrams of caffeine ended up taking 2,000 yeah, milligrams of caffeine and died. <laughs> That's insane. Wow. And now it's banned. Now you can't buy powder uh, caffeine anymore because of that. Oh, is, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, if you go mm-hmm. online, you're not able to buy straight powdered uh, caffeine. Can you caffeine. still do like the capsules? Yes. Oh, okay, the tablets. Yeah. So you just well. open the capsules. Yeah, because at the same I time, I think the alcohol was the powdered version. They were like promoting that as well. I saw that. Was, what is that? <laughs> dude, that's so bad. Which powder the, version of alcohol? Do you guys remember? That when sounds we, like fun. Yeah, when we were in Austin- and they had uh, oh yeah the the uh, the oxygen version of it right yeah it was, it was like it was a vapor a bong of it was a like a bong, bong of, of yeah. alcohol I was so, I was so fascinated by that I'm like it first of all I just don't think that was gonna take off I just but it was a weird feeling it's totally different than drinking it's oh, like you got a little bit drunk for about thirty seconds yeah that's yeah, so yeah it came and went that's and, why it will never take off it was expensive and you get a, a, a thirty second high from it then it's gone like no one's gonna want that if you just, drink the real thing that It'll last me hours, you know. Yeah, so right. I don't see anybody. Yeah, the ever best delivery for alcohol is in a drink. That's it. <laughs> We've it's, proven that. It's already time tested. Yeah, yeah over yeah. the last few thousand years. Speaking of drinks, uh, you want to just what a great example of the power of certain celebrities. Did you guys hear about what happened with Coca Cola? No. So Ronaldo, you know the. Oh, famous- I saw that. I, okay, so okay, I saw him take it off. The shelf, like he got all upset. Is that because he's sponsored by Pepsi or something else? Is I had no idea why he did no, that. No, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up just so, so there was a video. Okay, I saw the video, and you, I'll let you finish the story while you're looking it up. And it came in my feed, and it's Ronaldo getting ready to do a press conference, and somebody had two Coca Cola bottles on there, mm-hmm. and he looks irritated, and he takes the Coca Cola off off the counter. Now yes. I just assumed. That's because he was sponsored by some sort of a competitor, and that's why he did it? What was no, the- what he did was, is, and this is what it says, he was preparing to begin a press conference. He removed two Coke bottles from the table, so he looked at them and he removed them, and then replaced them with bottles of water and said, agua, which is Portuguese. So it's like, uh, not Coke, I'll drink water. Coke lost $4 billion. Shut market, just from that? In market value. Oh, wow. Wow. That's how... Powerful. Was that like a health move? Like he was trying. Who knows? To... Who knows? I think he's just. No, I think it was just. A, it looked like, or at least it looked from what I, the clip I saw. It was just. He I think ju- he was encouraging people to drink water. Yeah, I'm, or just I don't drink. He probably doesn't drink Coke, and he wants to drink water. But the fact that he, I think, because it was caught on air that he was making a stance against it, mm. and because of his influence. Wow. I know. I, he's now a- remember, Coke sponsors everything. They're the, one of the most powerful sponsors of all time. So I wonder what what's going to happen with Ronaldo, like how they're going to work this out. Because literally, four one thing, four billion dollars of market value gone. I didn't read what, that. That's, now, that's fascinating. Power. Insane. Dude. So and again, Coke sponsors the tournaments he plays in. They sponsor. Well, he's the, like like literally the most popular athlete in the world. In right? the world, yeah. He like nobody like really touches him. And remember all those those countries where soccer super popular. Coca-Cola is extremely powerful, very, very powerful in a, a lot of these countries. Wow. So, and, and, and well, you know what's funny about that is Coke is um, Coke owns Dasani, mm-hmm. which I love Dasani water. Mm-hmm. So you would think that uh, they would they would figure a way out to like run. <laughs> we, a, we got water too. <laughs> yeah. Ex- no. Exactly. Yeah. You know they're gonna do. They have to do something like that, right? Because you're not gonna convince him to do an ad for Coke. He would. I wonder what the the profit margin is on Coke versus uh, water because. A bottle of Dasani doesn't it cost as much as a bottle of Coke? No, no. You no, sure? 
Not as much. No, it's like a dollar versus something that's like two something, right? Really? Doug? What do you think, Doug? I think Coke might be a little more expensive. Okay, because that yeah, would make sense. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, water plus I'm stuff. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, plus yeah. stuff. Plus, stuff. plus <laughs> color. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's a little bit. Hey, speaking of you know powerful companies and moves and stuff like that, uh, did you see Spotify on the move again? What really? with what? So three year, sixty million dollar contract uh, with uh, the podcast from Barstool, the Call Her Daddy podcast. Wow! Yeah, top five podcast, I think, in all oh. podcasts. So they just made how it much? Th they bought it off of Barstool. Huh? Yeah, three year, three year, sixty million uh, dollar deal. Oh my god, that's exciting! Now, what does that typically look like? They own the podcast. And then what do they do? They can they pay the salaries of the hosts, and and Barstool loses complete rights to it, or is it like a like they're renting it essentially for three years? And well, I mean, we could sit here, sort we could of like syndicate, we could or? have fun and speculate, but I don't know the details of that. It's very similar to when we were speculating about Joe Rogan's deal. Like I, you know, I think there's a lot, there's probably a lot of nuances in the contract as far as what who gets what and how much and how it's paid over time. Can you or can you not advertise in addition to that? So mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like a few things, but I mean, just the fact that Spotify's they made a deal with the Obamas too. I don't know what that was. They made another deal with uh, two other uh, you know famous podcasters that I didn't know who they were, but they are obviously big podcasts. Boy, podcasting's come a long way since we first started. Uh, yeah, you we think? Start, uh, yeah, except, was it seven years <laughs> yeah, ago? Th thanks to Doug for posting that video oh, of uh, one of our That's first podcasts. If you go to Mind Pump Doug uh, on uh, at Mind Pump Doug on Instagram, he posted. A video of us. What year was that? December eighth. What was the two thousand fourteen? Twenty fourteen. And it was. It had to be one of our first podcasts that we did. We're literally in his living room, and yeah. it felt like it. And it's hard to watch, dude. We suck <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Welcome back to Mind Pump. Please subscribe to our awesome show, um, so you can hear some of these uh, uh, incredibly informational topics. And is it so really awesome though? It's it's pretty awesome. It's it's, it's, it's it's. I've been told it's Howard Stern meets fitness. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I know I go right for the fucking top, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've been told yeah, right. a lot like the fucking number one guy. Right. Pretty much. So we're speaking to the four of you that are listening to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, also, yeah. it doesn't look like seven years ago. It looks like 20 years ago. I don't understand <clears throat> how we entered into this aging vor vortex <laughs> where time all of a sudden moves faster. I don't know. I feel like everybody looks better. Yeah. Back Ever, then. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I'm like, we were promoting fitness. I mean, yeah. you were a little more gray. But you look small mm. in there. Um, I'm a lot more gray now. Come on, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were also coloring it though back then. Right? I don't think I colored it then. Oh, really? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're this shit ramped up, dude. I mean, you're you're gray. I have no hair, so there's there's a big difference yeah. there. I was chunky and baby faced. You know? Yeah, would yeah. never smile because his teeth were all smile, fucked up. All fucked you know? up so <laughs> wouldn't talk much. Yeah. So at I think, all. I thought everyone looked it looked better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we look older. You know, yeah. not much you can do about that. But we've I mean, come a long way. But you know, seven years ago when we started the podcast, more often than not, if somebody asked me, you know, what I did. I would, and I said, "Oh, I have a podcast." No idea what it is. More often than not, people will be like, "What's yeah. a podcast?" Yeah. yeah, that's how far it's come. Now we're getting these sixty million dollar, one hundred million dollar deals for just podcasts. And you know what's even what's crazy? It still is a fraction of the power that talk radio used to have, which means there's so much room, or even YouTube for that matter. I mean, it's so much room to grow. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I go back and forth on how much more will it grow. Do you think that? It fully replaces uh, radio. And yeah, home. really, I do. It, once they figure out how to how to um, monetize better with adding in uh, partners and, and ads, like on Spotify, it's a little clunky still, in my opinion. What do you mean? Uh, in in terms of like how they they squeeze in the ads and uh, everything's at the very front of it. Uh, and all you got to do is fast forward it. And, and so I, I don't know like how that's all going to work out in terms of like just sponsoring the show and like mm -hmm. saying like, Hey, this is, this is, this show is just completely sponsored by so-and-so. Yeah. Everything's going digital. So all, uh, every broadcast, everything eventually is going to be replaced uh, by digital. And with, with radio in the past, in order to have analytics in terms of who's listening and how you're reaching people and who you can advertise to. It, the potential with digital uh, anything and podcasting, especially, the potential is massive to yeah. target audiences, to un, you know, to see when people drop off, when they listen. Now, that doesn't mean the analytics are great. Now, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to tell you that analytics for podcasts suck compared to other digital platforms like yeah. YouTube. 
has got way better analytics than podcasts do, but it's going to happen. I guarantee it. as the competition grows, it's, you're going to start to have very, very good analytics. And I do 100%. I think it's going to replace uh, all broadcast uh, radio and anything audio in that in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see radio actually staying around that long. I just also think that there's so many other competing things, like YouTube, for example. Like, the, just the, the idea that you could actually... That's a good uh, point. I see what you're saying. Watch, um, you know, t a television show on your phone today is is just incredible. I mean, back in the day when you were a kid, okay, uh, and you're at the pool, you have the radio playing and you have music going. So, okay, yeah. so you're, but now you've had the option to possibly shoot up uh, a show and stream television or, mm -hmm. you know, out there on the pool deck. Well, you, you know, could, it's a good- Things like that just didn't exist before. You know, it's a good comparison w would be interesting. Like how many people does, like, so the top- uh, podcast, uh, I would say is probably Joe Rogan in terms of reach. Yeah. One of them, right? Yeah. Him, Adam Carolla. I would compare Joe Rogan's reach to, uh, Rush Limbaugh or Howard Stern at their peak. And I'd, I'd love to see what those numbers look like. Like at Howard Stern's peak, how many people were listening to his show on a weekly or monthly basis versus what Joe Rogan is doing right now. That'd be a good comparison to see. Yeah. That's an, that's, like. an, that's interesting. Right? I don't know if you could find that Doug, if you could see like Howard Stern's uh, reach at his peak, and then look up Joe Rogan's uh, current reach, and let's see what those two numbers look like. And again, podcasting still is, in terms of you know total people listening, is minuscule compared to what radio yeah, was. Yeah, the YouTube thing's interesting because you do have the option of the visual element, which you know a lot of people love that even more so than the audio. And then yeah. the audio is also just nice because you can, if you're on the road or you're you know doing work at the same time, you can just listen to your show. So it's like you have options to just keep it going. Well, and there's just so many other competition. There's just other things that are fighting for your attention. Social media, for that matter, too. Like just there's that distraction. Like when you listen to the radio back when we were kids, they're just part of the reason why you did was also because there just wasn't a lot of other options of what you could be doing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so right. you were limited to that where there's, you know, social media is uh, competing with that. Serious uh, radio is competing with that. You know, all the different stream, iHeart radios, the, the Spotify's, the iTunes, the, all the streaming services. Like, so they're all kind of fighting for your attention and uh, all of them are doing well, but I don't know if you're going to see the same kind of dominance that you saw in radio and television back in the days. So that would be an interesting stat. So Howard up. Stern, at, at its peak, it says here, was syndicated to 60 radio markets and gained an audience of 20 million listeners at its peak. So what does Joe Rogan have in comparison? I think Joe Rogan's probably he might pretty, have surpassed him. <clears throat> that's right. He might have been pretty pretty damn competitive. Yeah, well, I mean, from what numbers I've heard him uh, talk about on on the show, it, it, it was definitely more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's. Uh, I mean, he's like mil I think he's like a few hundreds of millions. Yeah, a few hundred million a month, I believe. Yeah. Well, there you go. That that just goes to show you that although we have more variety and stuff, you also have more ways to access it, right? Rogan. That's right. You could listen to it anywhere. You could access it pretty much anywhere you have electricity. Whereas with Howard Stern, if you weren't next to a radio, you weren't you weren't listening. I wonder how they calculate that too, because just like what we're learning about our our show, right, is um, we have two audiences now. We really do. Like That's we true. we have the the podcast audience, which, which is, is different. You iTunes and stuff, which is very different than our audience on YouTube. You, yeah. I mean, I think I on the show, I think I mentioned that or on my story the other day that our YouTube audience was eighty twenty. I was wrong. It's actually ninety ten. So 90% of our YouTube audience are, are male our listeners dudes. and younger. So mm -hmm. they're more in their 20s where the podcast is more of a 50-50 split and it's older, like 30-35 range. Hmm. So, and I'm sure there's some crossover. I th I'm sure there's some people that listen in, but a very small percentage so, of people will listen to a podcast and then go watch the now, same podcast. Now, here's my question. Yeah. I've heard this, but I don't, I've never confirmed it. Is YouTube generally male dominated or yeah. is it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, the platform in general is that. I think Doug and I have looked up that before. Isn't the platform just use, it's like. Yeah, men f use it far more than yeah. women. It's like 60, 70%. Really? Yeah, well, see, that's I mean, got to change, right? Because YouTube is why do you say that? Because it's it's uh it's got lots of shows, lots of information, 
and at some point I would imagine it would balance out or or women on other platforms for watching well, videos and maybe, stuff. Maybe maybe women are just doing more important shit and it's just us guys that <laughs> can, just get distracted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so maybe that is never going to change, Sal. They're busy handling uh, shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Where guys are a little bit Will easy. you get off the couch and help me? Yeah. You know? yeah. Hold yeah. on, I'm watching, watching all our conspiracy rabbit hole videos, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. No, so, sorry, honey. I'm, I'm yeah, I don't know. That's that's an interesting uh, that's also too why um you know, I don't know how big podcasting is there's a bit of a, a self-selection bias most people are more intellegent um growth minded that are no, higher education yeah more income yeah that are consuming that content so you know maybe it really does well with that that you know uh, demographic of people but maybe it doesn't get the broader stream of people that listen to, to podcasts i mean have, have you not noticed that in your own circle like the friends that I do have that are like podcasters, mm -hmm. they're my growth minded yeah. type friends. They yeah. are, but how I have podcast friends and I have YouTube friends. Yeah, and right. And they're different. That's well, how I feel. Yeah. And now here's the thing though. No I, offense, YouTube yeah, fucking I fans. I love yeah. the YouTube guys. Yeah. 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 Don't but, don't don't flame them both in the, in no, the, in the comments. No flames. I you know, yeah. they're just different. Uh, I never said anything. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys are the smartest audience that exists. You know, so here's one thing that I have noticed though, is that that trend has changed a little bit. When we first started podcasting, it was definitely the big time nerds that only listened. Now you're getting more everyday people that listen. I think podcasting lent itself well to that, but as it becomes more and more and more popular, you, everybody's going to start listening to podcasts. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. Really? It's, that's like saying that everybody would listen to, but before podcasting, that everybody would listen to talk radio. Did you listen to talk? Were you a big talk radio guy? Well, see, that's, years that's ago? the thing. There was lots of different kinds of talk radio, right? There I know, was, but were you a big personally? Were you a big talk radio guy? In the morning commute, yeah, everybody. But I we mean, were I younger did. back then too. You know, like I, I found myself like I would have never listened to talk radio, but now I would. Like once I was uh, like late thirties, I started to kind of get into podcasts, and obviously, but like I was more interested in what people had to say versus before that, I was just music. Yeah, that, that was it. Just that was music. me too. Music all the way. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want. Even in the morning, morning commute. Yeah, no. Fuck I mean, no. Lamont Tonelli or something. Like I was. That. Yeah, there you go. I, I would. I would listen. I to mean, that. again, now you're you're fast forwarding to my 30s. Like, if I'm listening to talk radio, it was in my 30. In my 20s, I'm. I got a CD in there. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And then as soon as MP3 players came, I've got my thing hooked up. I don't CDs wanna, nuts. I don't want to listen to Damn. commercials. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it, it attracts. What was your CD? What was your favorite? What was your in your regular rotation? Oh my Back God. in the day. One yeah. CD, you're asking? Well, I don't know. What, well, was there a CD? had one was... CD on repeat. Like, yeah, constantly. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Didn't you I have agree. one that was like your go-to that you just listened to? No, I don't. I don't. Think... Allison Chains Dirt. I mean, there's certain, I mean, no, I listened to yeah. probably, I probably wore out my my Tool CDs more than almost oh, yeah. anything. Yeah. I listened yeah. to a lot you of You still one. listen to Tool. I love Crazy. Tool. I mean, it's one of those. Undertale. It's a, it's a band that I feel like I can be in like all different types of moods and I still like to listen to it, where a lot of other music, I have to be in a very specific type of mood to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Like I have to, like I can't listen to too much heavy metal when I'm like just cruising in the car. Like I can't do that's ju Justin trips me out. Because I can listen to it. He literally, Any yeah, med he literally meditates no, like, to yeah. the most. I can fast fall asleep to it. Evil shit. Yeah. No. I, someone asked me the other day about what, what asked my most annoying thing about the two of you. I forgot what I said about you, but that was what I said about Justin. Probably the like, way, I, <laughs> probably the way I chew food. Or no, something like well, that. I normally get you on that one. It was something else that I, I, yeah. I nailed. Oh, I think you, you, Sal sounds right even when he's wrong. That's what uh, I said. That's not annoying. annoying. That's, 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 that's an that's, attribute. Just, that's, yeah. that's annoying. It's a superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then mine for Justin was like, and I was thinking about because we were like, you know, it was quiet in the car. We were heading up to Truckee, <laughs> and it's just like, and I when I drive, I actually like to be kind of in my head a little bit and like have in he's my like, thoughts. Yeah, it's like, I'm like, oh my God, bro. Can we just have some silence? Keeps my heart going. Yeah. <laughs> some focus. There's some easy listening jazz. You know, no, I was already I was already professing that to all the kids I've been working with for football. I'm like, you guys need to get yourself some metal CDs. Oh, I didn't say CDs, but start listening to metal. <laughs> like whatever, you know, coach. Like, what, whatever, old guy. Um, no, so you, you wait, hold on. You're, you're, it's you're, the metal mentality. Okay, this is what we need to establish. So you There's told this, you told the the team the full because now you're coaching the team. You're the strength yeah. coach. Yes. You literally told them go home and listen to metal. That was their homework. Yeah, that is so rad, bro. dude. Because listen, it it provides like a hardening. It, it's it's. <laughs> 
it's like it, it's something that it, you're you, not wrong. I, like it's a mentality. It's it it it's a driver. It's something that you bring into an in, intense situations. Uh, the more you listen to it, the more you get it. And, and I, I just want to start really like planting those seeds. Did you tell them specific bands and songs and stuff? Oh uh, yeah, I'm like Pantera, Sepultura, you know, Lamb of God. Like like let's let's get yeah. in some of that real driving like like powerful music. Dude, like, if I could, if just... you want to get strong and powerful, you got to really like start like. Like plugging it in. Dude, if you weren't so far away right, right now, I'd kiss your face. Yeah. That's such a great. <laughs> and these just, kids are so lucky. Yeah. I swear to God, they have no idea how much they're going to grow. Well, I just, and- I'm on this mission and, and I just feel like everybody's so soft. And, 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 and this is one cure. Metal cures the soft, fluffy bullshit. <laughs> you're gonna get. A, you're gonna get parents calling. I know you're you get some angry mom. Good, yeah, come at me. Yeah, uh, good, my come son on. is summoning demons in his room. What the fuck did you tell him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what? there's there's positive metal. You know, it's really hard. It sounds like demonic, but it's it's they they don't talk about terrible stuff. No, it's, you know, right? like even like hate breed. Like it's all positive. Yeah, but, the, title the, the of irony of of the name. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of energy and hype and whatever we've now been using uh the sponsor super coffee what's the what's the the lowdown what do you guys think because i have my opinion on i that. love it yeah I, I, love, I love the mint mint one that's my favorite that's, okay uh, that's so my jam so i've been i must have i've been saying on the podcast probably i don't know at least seven years since we started one of the best things to do with your calf with your coffee or caffeine is to combine it with like theanine mm-hmm. it just and i'm telling you guys if you haven't done this yeah we were on that early go do this it will make the biggest difference in the world when you drink your normal coffee in the morning take two or four hundred milligrams of theanine with it and go ahead and dm me and tell me how you feel it totally like just different. tapers that that high so you don't get yeah. too high with you know the jitters or whatever and it just you ride it out longer it's smooth anyway so super coffee has that it's got other nutrients so it's not just caffeine it's got other nutrients in there. They also standardize it. So like a can of the ready to drink is 200 milligrams, which is a good dose. Mm-hmm. And they have one that has uh, plant protein in it. And then they have the dairy version. So the plant protein one is pretty good. It's got, I think, 10 grams of protein plus MCT oil in it, plus the theanine and other stuff. Now, do all the products have the theanine in it? I haven't, I haven't checked. That's to see part them. of their blend, right? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the blend. That's with probably the, why I like it so much. Yeah. Though. So it just feels so, so Jessica loves it, right? So she takes it, but it's a little strong for her because she's, she's not, she's trying to lower her caffeine. So she'll do like a half calf or excuse me, half decaf half super coffee blend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so she can have both. Or have you seen, Doug, can you pull up all the stores that they're in? They're all over the place. You know yeah. that? They're, I've seen them. I've seen, I, I saw them in Safeway. Yeah. Uh, I took a pic for you guys. Yeah. Like, hey, I, I get stuff. tagged on it quite a bit and it's not, uh, people aren't ordering it, ordering it online from us. A lot of times people are just picking it up at the grocery store. Yeah. So I want to see all the different Words stores. Out already. Yeah. Speaking of uh, supplements, uh, I've been reading more, you know, I always bring up creatine and how it's probably going to be at some point soon one of the most recommended supplements around just for health. Forget muscle building, forget, you know, strength that we already know it does that. But did you guys know they're they're finding benefits now for arthritis? Wow. Take creatine, it helps alleviate pain from arthritis. What's it something what, to do with the blood flow? Like yeah, what, what, what's going you on? You know, it's it's improves mitochondrial function, improves strength. And it's, I guess it's got anti-inflammatory properties as a result, but people who have arthritis who take creatine huh. will say that they well, feel doesn't better. Well, does it have an anti-inflammatory for the brain? Like, is, was, wasn't that part of the, or is it just the cog- cognitive benefits? It, cognitive yeah, benefits. Okay. And it's got some antidepressant uh, effects too for some people. Some That's people will take yeah, it really and feel like their mood get lifted. So this is a supplement I've never recommended to like my dad. My dad's got, he, yeah, he's got joint pain up and down his spine and his, his knees. He's been working hard labor since he was a child. He grew up very poor. Um, I'm going to give my dad creatine mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll report back uh, to you guys. On That's it. really interesting. Isn't that yeah. interesting? W- wow, Doug, are those yeah, all the stores? Another thing. Yeah, locally, Safeway, Walgreens, Home Foods, CVS, Target. All yeah, carry they, super coffee. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. They've, it's super. They've exploded. Yeah. Hey, you know, you brought up, Sal, the other day, you were talking about the whole uh, Jeff Bezos and um, yeah. Elon type of deal. Yeah. You know, I was Income reading- tax thing. Yeah, I was reading- our, You know how much that he- he donated this last this last year, 2020. Bezos? Yeah, $10 billion. Oh, 
Yeah, how much? How angry does that make you that, that they get targeted by media and politicians, and then people who are ignorant see that and yeah. say it's not fair yeah. without even knowing? What it's the not enough. That's ridiculous. What I, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like I, I $10 guess ten billion dollars. I know. It's like, would you guys rather him been taxed five billion more dollars and then not gave any money towards any sort of great cause? Like, I just think that's so interesting. You want to know something? Get, you want to know something interesting? It's inconvenient information. This, this yes, and this is an objective fact. Objective fact. Uh, uh, capitalist societies with, with freer markets, which most of the Western world is, including the Scandinavian countries. I hate it when people bring those up and say they're socialists. They're not. They're free market-based, capital-based societies. They just have some elements of uh, you know socially funded uh, programs, but they're very, very free market. When you look at countries that are capitalistic, the freer the market, the more the more you know innovation and wealth that people generate, the more giving they are, the more that they give to charity, the more that they give time and donate time. So it's not just money; they also donate more time to helping other people. So mm -hmm. it's it, overall it produces a more giving society. And I know that goes contrary to popular opinion, which says that they're it's it's greedy or whatever. But actually, the numbers don't show that. They actually show the opposite. They show that we're more giving. Where we donate more of our time and energy yeah. towards helping people. Yeah, his yeah. ex gave like six billion dollars. Jeez. Yeah, something like that. You know that she became instantly after the divorce, like uh, I think top fifty most wealthiest people. She was the wealthiest uh, woman, right? I, yeah, she, I, think, I think she she got that yeah, title. Yeah, she's a, she's like top fifty people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and her wealth is just growing still rapidly. I think she there the article. Well, it's that cool I was to reading, see she's already like donating. It's a, like a, that amount. It's crazy. Yeah, the article is actually more about her and like all that she does like a lot of like small companies that are trying to do like good like uh yeah, i forget some of the names but nothing i've ever heard of as far as like instead of just kind of throwing it like one big foundation like her husband uh does i think he does one for like climate change mm -hmm. and it's like a big umbrella like type of mm -hmm. foundation that he throws all of his towards where she's like hand selected all these mm -hmm. you know small companies that are going and doing stuff but yeah between the two of them 16 billion dollars towards Can, you know what an awesome position to be people. in how, how how good would that feel to be able to write that check to it, somewhere that you want the money to go to not that you're forced to give it to someone and right. you don't you don't believe in what they're doing but rather you can pick an organization and you can say here's uh, you know, a million dollars or here's a billion dollars. Like how yeah. great would that be? Or Instead feel? of it just getting taken from you and you have no idea where it's yeah. going to go. And it's, it's more <laughs> yeah. bombs, yeah, more, it's like, oh, more, cool. more bombs and jets. Yeah, drones. Yeah. We need a lot more of those. <laughs> you know, yeah. speaking of, of countries and, and stuff like that. So uh, news out of China, they now allow their people to have three kids. So wow, lucky people what a, over there. Yeah. How long was Thanks, that? Government. How long was that law for? Long time. It was a long time. So everybody there only has two kids, or is it like one of those things? that's like it was a one-child rule. Oh, it was one child. For, yeah, yeah, for a long time. Yeah. For a long time, you could only have one child, and there were exceptions to being able to have two, which uh, was messed up because we saw. I mean, obviously, some of the priority was that it was going to be a boy. Yes, and then there was this issue, dude. With, uh, yeah, it was the, dark. The black market for uh, in China for aborting female, yeah. uh, you know, babies was huge, and abandoning female babies. So they would have a female, and they'd say, "We want a male," and they would literally abandon the baby. Yeah. There was a whole documentary on it. There was a documentary. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's wow. hard to watch. It's so scary. It's so wow. terrible. So that they is... had the one child for 35 years. 35 years. And now that they can have three children, people don't want to have three children. Oh, wow. What because is... the economy's gone up. And in countries where the economy is it's good, true. populations go down, number of children go down. That's actually quite true. As people... Why are those related? <laughs> People are more wealthy. They're not concerned about having children to take care of them uh, huh. when they get old, that yep. type of thing. Yep. Look yep. at Japan, maybe like one and a half ch uh, children per, per family. Yeah. Is that what the average is? I think so. Yeah. And we're what are we, two and a half here? We're 2.2 or 2.3, something like that. I'll look it up. Yeah. yeah. It's on the average. I'll be uh, the point two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with your kid? Yeah. That's the point two. He's just the point two. <laughs> that we're, that yeah. we're having. He's trying real hard, but though. You imagine living in a country like that where they're like, hey, one kid. Or you're going to jail, or all of a sudden like, you can have three. Like, That's what's so scary. I know yeah, it's just scary to, to allow that kind of power to dictate your just living and being a human being. I know it's crazy. So yeah. what are they going to do now that they want? They obviously looking to grow their population now. All of a sudden, I wonder how they're going to encourage people yeah. to have 
I don't more know. than one kid. Did I mean, you guys see the the John Cena video where he was addressing something he got? Uh, oh yeah, why did flamed he flamed for? He got all kinds of heat. Yeah, you know, because uh, apparently, like he was he was promoting some movie launch that he was in, but uh, acknowledged that uh, Taiwan was its own country, oh, and China did not like that. That's and right. So he basically went on this like apologized we- really weird uh, like apologetic video. Uh, all in uh, is it Mandarin? I, I don't know what language it was, but it was definitely like uh, it was this really bizarre um, like China profession. Totally. Like, like they gave him a script, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." You know? Like, oh, really? I, I'm sorry. I know I... that they're not a real country, and blah blah blah. Oh, and it's like, dude, like he just—that's a very visible. Uh, example, like we've seen, you know, other organizations like the NBA and things that have to like move and shift around because of the intertwined politics with China. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. well, they have a lot. Of, I mean, they, I mean, they got a lot of money. They that spend a lot of money on our market, and they have a huge influence because of that. So it, yeah. apparently, it was like almost sixty or seventy percent of the the box office income came from China. Is so. he getting roasted on his social media? Have yeah, you, have you yeah I'm that? sure. I would think. That I mean, there's been are... memes out the yin yang for that. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's weird, isn't it? It's just strange, and it's it, it just to me, it's it's like ooh, it's alarming to to see somebody that's like this, you know, powerful guy like that, like uh, sort of just bowing down. Well, I mean, I don't think it's that strange or what? weird. I think it's sad. I think it's it's that, sad. That's yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 more, it, it's yeah. more like like I don't want to see it. Let's right. It it's way. like it's pathetic that you. Uh, I mean, you care that much about you know how much money you're making that you would like forget my integrity or forget like my morals like whatever like whatever I have to say to make sure that it, the money keeps rolling it in. reminds me of like if all these countries were like monarchies you know and like mm-hmm. you have to go pay homage to the king and like go like you have to kneel like kneel mm-hmm. and then they're just like Ooh. yeah we, we take freedom of speech here for granted don't we big time that's one of the most important freedoms that we have we can never let that go away because then you get caught in otherwise we'll end up like John Cena yeah did you know that that when movies are made sometimes in Hollywood it, because China is now such a big market if China says we don't like this part you know, uh, then yeah, they'll, they'll you, move you have it. To edit it or they'll say, we want this doctor to be Chinese in, uh, instead of mm-hmm. you know, English or something. Then they'll actually change it yeah. and, and, and manipulate it because of the Chinese market now so big. So you might like this, Sal. I was, I had this thought like about, it was a scientific thought and, and it was uh, back when, you, you know, the whole theory of Pangea. And, um, like that, that I'm like, does this still stand today? Because I know like the scientific community kind of brought that up as like a potential possibility because of the way that everything shifts with, with plates, um, that at one point, a lot of these continents were really close to one mega continent. And it always has made sense to me because of all the different cultures around the world that were pretty damn similar, but all of a sudden now we're really far apart. Like Olmecs, for example, had like you know, these statues that like really look like they had African features and, you know, this is in South America and it's like, they didn't know what to do with that. And, and, you know, and so I'm like, well, is this something that still holds? And so I guess there's this whole thought that there's like four different, uh, uh, ways that they, they think that in the future there could be another super continent. So just one big, huge continent because of the way it all, you know, shifts and might actually align and come back together again. So it was, it was pretty funny. Like, I don't know. I'd have to get Doug to kind of pull, pull up like those four Wait, things. Wait, so they think, okay, so obviously the, 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 t- the tectonic plates shift. And so the theory was go. that they were all together. Yeah. Then they separate and spread out. And so what they're saying is that at some point they'll come back and converge. Or some, yeah. Some might in converge. different organiz- organized ways. And so there's four different like I wonder how long that versions of that. <laughs> it's dude, not in our lifetime. Well, it says it's <laughs> uh, it was like something like it, they move at uh, a couple inches or something like per year. So it's not like it would take like millions of years, you know, <laughs> like, like to, to even like have this happen but there's send a message in a bottle for someone to get later on yeah yeah we knew this was like coming. here you, yeah <laughs> like finally we're, we're like on shore with you yeah. Yeah. yeah have you guys ever heard read stories of people finding messages in bottles that yeah. are like 50 years old oh that old yeah oh no i haven't heard i that. read one a long time ago where there was a, a young lady that found a message in a bottle and it was in a, it was like a letter written to somebody it was like 50 or 60 years old 
and she located the grandchild of the person. No way. Yeah, and delivered, really? and wow. delivered the letter. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That is really Does cool. that make you want to make one? I feel like yeah. that makes me want to do it's one. Litter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the bottle. Yeah. yeah. For, I'm throwing a message okay. in the bottle. So here's the garbage four just in the before ocean. I forget. All right. So you got Nova Pangea. Uh, which is new Pangea. Yes. You have Pangea Ultima, which actually has, it's kind of cool. It's like this conglomerate, but it also has like a water feature in the middle. So it's just like this huge lake, lake in the middle. Uh, uh, and then you have Orica, like A-U-R-I-C-A, and then Amasia. So that's your four different versions. Um, Amasia, of what's going to happen? Hold on. That's America's and Asia combined? Yeah. Is that what that is? That's already happening. There, real, crea- <laughs> hey, real creative with the names. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. vote's on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're already kind of merging. Welcome to Afro Europe. Yeah. Afro Europe. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. used to be Africa and Europe. Wow, Doug, pull this up. Look at this. A Perth family, so this is somebody uh, obviously from Perth, has found the world's oldest known message in a bottle 132 years. 32 years after it was thrown into the sea. Yeah. What? Wow, dude. It looks like it was typed. Is that typed? Is it typed, Doug? Zoom in on it and see if we can read it. 132 years ago? Wow. Something printed. I don't know if that's the original or not. Hmm. That That is... What if you open it up? It's like 132 years old. And it's like, you know, <laughs> p- please help. Ah, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got it's this. It's like a, a weird like cartoon. Yeah, I got yeah. this a little bit uh, too late. Hey, speaking of of help, Doug, can you pull up uh, what NCI is offering for free to fitness coaches? Oh, you know, fitness speaking of coaches? them, I'm, while you're looking that up, Doug, I'm really excited. So I ha- I just uh, messaged Jason, so getting him out here, I think he's going to fly out in the next week or two, so we can talk a little more detail about the project that we are all working on. So th- that will be going live uh, for our audience that, that want to get enrolled in it, and that's the... Uh, I don't know the name of the course, what we're gonna what we're gonna name it, but basically you have access to uh, the four of us in a, in addition to Jason on a, on a weekly basis, and I know he's putting it's like a, lot a master of, class, right? Yeah, kind of like that, and the idea is to make it um, very reasonable and affordable for for entrepreneurs that that want to be able to get that guidance from us, and so I'm pretty excited. So that's a, it's a go. We're moving forward. Uh, I think we'll have the the website set up in like the next couple of days. So here's what you can get for free right now that is really cool. So. They're going to give Mind Pump listeners an exclusive offer to gain access to our level one certification, which walks you through all of the education application necessary to get, of course, good results for yourself or one of your clients. Then they also give you free access to portions of their masterclass like women's health, men's hormone, thyroid, and gut health. That's all totally free. Um, So basically $5,000 worth of classes and courses uh, totally free uh, for a limited time. So this is really, really cool. Obviously, we've been working with NCI now for a while, one of our favorite online co- uh, courses for coaches and trainers. And uh, one thing that we always work out with Jason is like give people, give our listeners more free stuff mm-hmm. because it'll sell itself. So right. give them free information, let them in, let them see how it works, and then you know they'll either get just great value for free or they'll decide to do Yeah, I'm really more. excited for this project that we have coming up. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yep. Stop real quick before you continue with this podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out what we got for free. We put together a bunch of free stuff only for our listeners. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. Head over there. Get a bunch of free stuff before it goes away. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right. Our first caller is Christine from Idaho. Hey, Christine. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. Yeah, no problem. That's uh, So I'm 30 years old and I work full time as a paramedic and also part time as a reserve firefighter. My goal is to work full time for a local fire department, uh, but I'm really concerned that my strength is not where it needs to be to be successful. Uh, I'm I'm five foot six and about 145 pounds. When I use the in body scale at my local gym, it puts me at about 27 percent body fat. While I think my upper body strength is adequate, I really struggle with my lower body strength. And I think a lot of this has to do with the past injury. Uh, Ten years ago, I was hit by a car. The car's bumper hit the back of my leg just below my knee, and it tore my calf open. Uh, After the initial surgery, they weren't sure if they were going to have to amputate the leg, but thankfully I I was able to keep the leg. But I have some pretty severe deficits from that injury. Uh, My ankle mobility is extremely limited. I have posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, a collapsed arch, and some pretty significant nerve damage. I can't push off with my toes or pull my foot inward. Uh, 
Uh, I wear an orthotic in my shoe to help with the arch support, but otherwise there's not much else that can be done to help with the nerve damage or the shortened Achilles. I do see a physical therapist regularly for my leg, and he's working with me to try to increase my mobility and my strength with my ankle and my foot. Um, I've been trying for this job for uh, upwards of five years now. I've made some pretty good accomplishments physically considering my injury. Uh, I passed the mile and a half run that you have to do in 11 minutes and 30 seconds. I've done the pack test, which is the wildland test, which includes a 45 pound weight vest and a three mile hike. I've done the CPAT, which is the national test for entry level firefighter. And I also participated in a fire academy this past year and earned my firefighter one certification. Uh, the problem is I feel like I've nearly had to kill myself to uh, do these things. I don't give up easily on my goals, but I feel really pushed to the limit physically to achieve these things. Every time I go on shift at the local fire department here, I just feel really apprehensive. I won't be able to perform adequately during a structure fire call. Um, as I said, I've been trying for this goal for several years, but I just feel like I've really reached a ceiling on my physical strength and ability. I tracked my calories and I'm eating about 3000 calories a day with uh, 280 grams of that being protein. I do full body workouts three to four times a week with phased rep ranges, progressive overload and deload weeks. Uh, I commute on my bike and usually total anywhere from three and at the most 10 miles a day. Uh, of course, my sleep is affected my, by my professions. I work uh, 24 hour shifts, usually two to four 24 hour shifts a week. Uh, so the sleep is, is a little more challenging for me for, for that reason. Um, I, I just feel like I'm constantly pushing myself to be better physically, and I'm just not seeing the results. Mm. Uh, it's really frustrating to see other girls, uh, even locally in these local departments, that uh, seem to perform a lot better than me and are a lot stronger than me. And I just am not quite sure what I'm missing here. I, I even follow, you know, athletes on Instagram that have, are, have one leg amputated and wear a prosthetic and they're able to squat with one leg more than I can squat with two. Uh, so I understand this is a really loaded question with the added complexity of the past injury, but I was just hoping with the information I provided, you might be able to advise me on my nutrition or workouts or possible exercise variations to just help me progress and achieve my goals. Yeah, no. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of stuff. That's a lot right there. Yeah. So we need a little more backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Please. So uh, I got to figure this out. First of all, you're a badass and I appreciate yeah. what you do. Um, that's great. So uh, real quick, I want a little clarification. You're eating 280 grams of protein today. Did you say that? Yeah, I eat a ton of meat. I eat pro. I eat uh you know, grass-fed beef, chicken, eggs. Um, okay. Why so much? Yeah, that's that's why that's, so much. That's ex that's excessive amount. That's uh, excessive for me. Yeah. Why 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 so much? So yeah, yeah. Answer that. I guess it's just kind of the way my eating habits have developed. Uh, I eat a, a ton of fruit and vegetables, and then for my fats, mostly like nuts. I don't eat a ton of like uh, processed grains. So I guess to just kind of try to keep my calories high, it ends up being more protein, but I can try to adjust that if you think. Yeah. I, I, so a couple things I'm going to recommend. Um, one, and this one's iffy, but I think you'll probably respond better uh, doing it this way. I would cut your protein down. Uh, it's way too much protein. Not that it's necessarily bad, but you're probably noticing reductions in performance because a good chunk of that protein is just getting turned into glycogen. So mm -hmm. you're not utilizing all those amino acids. It's not it's just way too much for someone your not size. Not to mention the amount of time it takes for that to convert over into that. And then and then you're doing stuff that's probably... Glycolytic. Yeah. Like lots of glycolytic stuff. So I would take that protein and bring it down to 160 grams at the most. And then I would take the rest of it and eat it. Eat some complex carbohydrates, easily digestible. It could be white rice. It could be sweet potato, things that you find that are easily digestible. That should improve. Structure your, around your workouts too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should improve your performance. And then here's a second, and this one's very obvious for me, point. Um, you're overdoing everything, okay? Uh, you're definitely uh, probably a high achiever. Uh, you're doing a lot of exercise, a lot of writing. I keep hearing you saying that you're you, you you can't push yourself past this point, and there's nothing I can do. It sounds like well, you're you hitting. Feel like you're killing yourself going through all this. Yeah, too. you're you're. I've trained people like you, and, and then in addition to that, you allude to not getting the best sleep either. So yeah, yeah. I, I would take your workouts. I would cut them down. Do, do resistance training twice a week, so not three or four. 
two days a week. Focus on building strength. Don't go to failure. Practice the movements that you can do appropriately. So I'm, with your particular injury, if you can squat, then I would squat. If that doesn't work, do split stance style exercises. Mm -hmm. Continue working with a physical therapist and improve your mobility, but cut that stuff down. You're doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, way too much stuff, and your body is just not yeah. able to recover from all What of have you been able to do uh, exercise-wise for your legs? Um, well, it's, it's just very challenging. So, uh, you know, a few months ago, I was able to be doing squats and cleans, uh, deadlifts. Recently, Please. I've had like a hip thing flare up, you know, it, it, again, talking about, you know, pushing yourself, I, it feels like every time I start to like creep up on, on my max lifts, uh, for my lower body, I always end up getting some sort of injury that sets me back again. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, a couple of things. If you were able to do those, so I would also, um, I would follow MAPS Anabolic, follow it to a T, uh, two day a week routine, like Sal is saying. I would do uh, for you because of the, the your uh, situation with your calf. I would actually do heel raise uh, squats. So everywhere that there's squats in there, that way you can work on range of motion, right? So the limiting factor probably for your squat depth, I'm imagining is your ankle mobility and the lack of it in that yeah. one side. So you you were an example of somebody who, for this reason, I would allow to to put your heels elevated while while you squat. Yeah, and, right. and I would I would focus there and I and. and I would I would suggest even going more unilateral work and in, in split stance uh, for your legs, uh, mainly because of there's still a stability issue. If you say you keep coming up to a certain point and then inevitably yeah. hitting, you know that point where you feel like you're you're gonna get an injury again. There's something that's not being addressed, and and right. to go through that for for quite a lot of time, you're gonna still build a lot of strength and support, but you're gonna find that your hips and your ankle uh, are gonna be challenged more uh, stability wise, which is gonna be a a good thing overall not only that there's there's not a lot of benefit for you to be pushing max lifts either right i mean right. I, I don't think i would ever allow you to do right at least right not right now where you're currently at what we're, our goals are you know less than four to five reps on anything so you should okay. be at most working at 80 percent intensity so back off the weight i mean the the things that you're going to have to do as a firefighter it, aren't, aren't going to be you know a max loaded back squat you're going to have to do things that require a little bit of of grit stamina endurance and right. some strength and so your training should model that so i i wouldn't be constantly trying to push the weight trying to see how much more you can lift especially if your body keeps telling you otherwise you keep getting hurt yeah i would look at these the following symptoms uh look for issues with inflammation so inflammation creeping up in your joints look at your hair are you noticing that your hair is either getting you know dry or more straw like or if it falls out notice your skin is it dry are you noticing you know patches of dryness or oiliness in your skin of course sleep issues libido is your libido erratic in other words is it either sometimes really high or non-existent um and then look at hot and cold tolerance do you find yourself in a room with other people and being like is it really hot in here is it just me or is it really cold or is it just me these are all signs that you're you're just pushing your body too hard too long too often. Now, there's nothing wrong with the mental toughness that comes from that. You're going to need that. But to me, it, what's, what you're, from what you said, what screams to me is you're overdoing it, everything. You're just pushing your body too much, not getting enough sleep, and your body is just, you're spinning your tires uh, in the dirt. So back off on some stuff. Mm -hmm. Allow your body to adapt because it sounds like your body right now is primarily focused with healing. It's trying to just keep up and heal, mm -hmm. but not really given a chance to adapt. And I bet I'm probably not the first person to tell you that you overdo all this stuff, and it's probably something that's been a part of your personality for a long time. Am I guessing correctly? You you are. I think the the biggest thing that that is hard for me is feeling this pressure to achieve these physical goals and just always feeling like like I I don't do enough. Especially like the comparison trap is a bad one, but it's really hard when I look at 
other girls and they seem to be training more than me and being very successful. Whatever. Who cares? So don't worry about them yeah. because not, not to mention Instagram is a terrible place to, to judge that yeah, by. And, yeah. and you yeah. got to do, you look, what's your goal? Is your goal to look at other people and copy them or is your goal to be the best version of yourself? Maximize yourself. Yeah. So here's the deal. You've got, you sound like, uh, and based on what you do, I would assume you have incredible mental fortitude. I'm going to want you to direct that towards what I'm talking about because here's your challenge. Your challenge is going to be to do less, not more. And that's going to be hard for you. So meet it like a challenge. So when that voice creeps up in your head that says, you're not doing enough, you're not good enough, you should be doing more, remember that you're mentally tough and that you're not going to allow yourself to sabotage yourself like you've probably been doing for a long time by overdoing everything. So try that. Give it a shot and give it for at least four weeks, but I say give it even at least eight weeks. And if you start to see your performance improve, I'm right. Then that means I'm right and stay the course. Don't do this. When the performance goes up, don't then say to yourself, oh, cool, I'm in the clear. Now I can start hammering myself again. Don't do that. Do what works. Don't do what your your insecurities tell you to do. Does that make sense? Trust the process. Yeah. So, so keep the calories right where they're at, adjust, make those adjustments to the macros and then just cut back. You might even Shrug be able to, you might down. even be able to cut back a little bit on the calories if depending on how much uh, volume we reduce in your training. So I, I'm not sure what the two day a week routine, how much that's going to be uh, a reduction in what you are currently doing. You may be able to scale back to 25 to 2,700 calories. You know, I wouldn't even do that yet because uh, if you're in that state of HPA axis dysfunction, you're going to want to feed your body. I, I wouldn't reduce calories unless you absolutely need to. 27% body fat's fine. You're, you're not in a bad place body fat percentage-wise. You can perform phenomenally at that body fat percentage. So I would just keep your calories right around where they're at for now. We can always readjust later on. Drop the protein, increase the complex carbohydrates from easily digestible sources, and then back off on the intensity and the volume of your workouts and let your body adapt. Allow it, get out of the way and let your body do what it wants to do. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, do you have MAPS Anabolic, Christine? Uh, I, I do not. Okay. We're going to send that to you. So at least you'll have that to kind of follow a template. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I, I will do what you suggest, and I'll, I'll check back in with you and let you know how it goes. Yes, please Perfect. do check in back with us. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Some of the hardest people to work with. <laughs> she holds are... the record for the question, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Most detail? Yeah, yeah. That was I mean, a, yeah. That was, we that didn't was... have to ask questions that way, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but no. I, I, how hard is it to train people like this? It's like harder to train someone like this than it is to train someone course, who you have to get course. you know motivate because – it's like they just they're want taking it. it all on. You know? Yeah. That's just the mentality. I yeah, mean, it's the a tough one. The positive of her going on and on and on about everything was it was a dead giveaway that that's how she, the way she does everything yeah. is all out. Okay. Yep. This and then this and this. And yeah. This, even this, the way she asked yeah. her question was all out. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. all, all out on the protein, all out on the workouts, all out on my mobility, all out on the testing. Yeah. Like everything is all out. It's like, like it's okay. You can rest. Yeah. yeah. It, it is it's pretty good amazing. for your body. It is amazing though. I've had clients like this. And when I finally convince them to do what I say and just to trust me, it's like they're blown. Yeah. They can, oh my God, I had no idea. It's like, I know. I think it takes I, a lot of conversations. I think just reducing her protein and potentially calories is going to make a difference. Three, your body, think about doing all that work, lacking in sleep, and then also trying to digest and process all that. It's 260 protein. grams yeah, of protein. Yeah, that's a lot of protein. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, and and for a, a she's not a big girl, you know what I'm saying. So she that much that much protein and calories to be digesting while you're lacking in sleep and pushing the body all day long. Her body's just on overtime. It's like, dude, let it rest. Yeah, a there's bit. her body's literally taking more than half of that protein, turning it into glycogen, which is a lo much longer process than just eating carbohydrates. It's a total waste. Yeah. Our next caller is Heather from North Carolina. Hey, Heather, how can we help you? Hi. Um, so I, um, I'm getting married in October. Um, and right now I'm a travel nurse. Um, just to give a little context, I have a background mostly in endurance training, um, marathons, half Ironmans, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm looking for just some recommendations for the direction that I should go with my, um, fitness regimen as I move towards the wedding. Um, I've never really had an aesthetic goal or like a timeline for, um, when I want to like look or feel a certain way. Um, and to give a little bit of background for my weight training, 
I have about four years of somewhat weightlifting experience. Um, and when I say weightlifting, I mean picking up and putting down weights <laughs> about four years ago. But I really started weight training about two years ago um, with powerlifting, Olympic lifting and that kind of thing. Um, and CrossFit. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, it's okay. But any any recommendations that you have, I'm, I'm open to them. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So, how, how much time do we have again? What's the What's the time frame for the wedding? Yeah. Um, so I get married October 9th. October 9th. And, and so, what's your ultimate goal? Are you is it, is there an aesthetic goal, or you look? Is there a performance goal that you have for that? Um, I think short term, like pre wedding, more aesthetic, but long term. I'm an athlete. I've always been an athlete. I think performance would be a great direction to kind of transition maybe after the wedding. Okay. Um, but yeah, for the wedding itself, uh, aesthetic would be the goal. Well, if, if aesthetic well, your focus right now. Yeah. If it's aesthetic, <laughs> then I would focus, uh, really make the cornerstone of your workouts resistance training. That's what's going to give you the sculpted uh, look. It's what's going to speed up your metabolism, make it easier to get lean. And then nutrition. Mm -hmm. Those two things are, are going to give you the aesthetic mm -hmm. goals that you have. Now, after the wedding, what you can do is you could trade resistance training workouts for performance or athletic type workouts. So let's say you like to run. Um, mm -hmm. And let's say leading up to the wedding, you're lifting weights three or four days a week, which is probably a good routine. After the wedding, you could back down to two days a week of resistance training or one day a week of resistance training and then run two or three days a week. Uh, but leading up to the wedding, if it's aesthetic, train like a bodybuilder and mm -hmm. look at your nutrition. Those two things will get you looking the best, the fastest uh, versus anything else. Well, we even we have a little more time. I'm, I, if I'm doing my math right, we have like four to five months. So mm -hmm. we we and I me what I would do with you is I would run anabolic first, and then I would trans and then I would transition you into maps aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And then when you get done with your wedding, then I'd pull you back to a, either a one day a week with anabolic with your running or like a, a MAPS performance type of a program. So that's what your programming would look like for me. And that you have plenty of time. So I think that we could do mm -hmm. a lot. I think the anabolic is a perfect transition from what you're coming from and a great place mm -hmm. to start you. It's also the way we, we wrote it with that intention to start most people up. Now, technically, I would normally move you to performance, but since we have an aesthetic goal and we have a time frame, I would skip you right into maps aesthetic. So that's what the programming would look yeah. like. Yeah, just challenge yourself because it is going to be a completely sh different shift of focus. Uh, uh -huh. I know for me <laughs> specifically, I'm always kind of trying to voice this that, you know, I don't really focus on hypertrophy that much. But when you do go all in that direction, your body's going to, you know, definitely change and it's going to respond uh, in a different way. It's a totally different way to, to, to train and stimulate the body. So just trust, trust in, in, in the process of that. I know a lot of athletes like have a hard time because they want to jump back and do functional type exercises and things that will apply more towards like their true passion, but uh, you know, go all mm -hmm. in it would be my suggestion. Okay. And yeah. And just to give a little bit more background, I'm a travel nurse now. So right now, um, when I'm traveling with, I have about 170 pounds, including a bar, um, that I'm working with. And then I have 25 pound dumbbells. Um, and the last like week or so I've, I've done starting strength, uh, with like the Mark Ripto program. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of thought that was maybe a good way to start transitioning into doing more mm -hmm. weightlifting for the time being. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. a that's a solid routine. Uh, but okay, yeah, go. I would go maps anabolic, maps aesthetic, and you have enough you have enough weights to be able to do both programs. Both of them come with a dumbbells only version as well, so that okay. they, they can both be modified for the equipment that you have. Do you have access to either one of those programs? Um, I don't. All right, we'll send that over to you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, and congratulations on uh, getting married. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's right. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that the the I want to look good, <clears throat> but I also like to run. Like to run a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, this I'm not necessarily you know talking crap about running, but when it comes to aesthetics and getting lean and having the sculpted look, it's not the ideal way no, to do that. It's, it's far from it. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different goal. So yeah, that's again, it's the same on the other end of it. It's like I want my cake, but I want to eat it too. It's uh, you know, it's the athletes. I can identify with this uh, in terms of like having to then do what I don't really normally do because, um, you know, that's that's what's going to have the most impact on my body. I think it's because everybody has a person in their life like that, right? The the friend who 
who runs and they have like that great physique also. Mm -hmm. And so you see that oh, and you're yeah. like, oh, you know, well, he does this or she does all yeah. that. And I, I like that. And I'd like to do that. It's just wherever your, your starting point is, the, if your goal is aesthetic, you know, to change your physique, right? Your body composition, uh, running is just not the ideal way to get there. Now, if you get there, you build the physique you want, and then you want to introduce running into the routine because you love doing it, then I think that's a great strategy and there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a very healthy way to live. But people will just, for some reason, still think that that is like a really good strategy to yeah. get Well, the especially when shape. you have a timeline, you right. know, like, like yeah. it, it just be specific with, with your goals. Our next caller is Juan from Quebec, Canada. Hey, what's up, Juan? How can we help you? Hey guys, so first of all, I've been listening for over two years and I have nothing but respect for y'all. And so please keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. And so a little bit of background on my question, it's regarding my niece. So since the last year, due to like the, the pandemic and the lockdown, I had a, I had quite the like the, the, the change in my lifestyle. So my activity levels decreased. Uh, I stopped walking a lot. And uh, the gyms got closed over here uh, for over eight months. And that was pretty, pretty hard on my lifestyle. I was at the time I was following MAPS Anabolics. So I was lifting consistently. Then after that, uh, after a couple of months into lockdown, I noticed a clicking noise on my knees. So every time I would go past 90 degrees on a squat, uh, I would hear like this grinding noise, this grinding like <clears throat> sound that it would be just, it's just a noise. Like it doesn't, like I don't feel it. It doesn't hurt, but it's just, a, it's just an annoying noise that's not normal, of course. So I did a couple of things. So first of all, I just thought it was a, lack of priming. So I got into priming uh, that like it helped just a little bit, but it didn't have like a big effect on it. Then I did some research and I thought it was a uh, muscle imbalance. So uh, like there's several muscles attached to the knee joint and I thought it was a muscle imbalance. So I started foam rolling and I, I also modified I took uh, MAPS Anabolics and I modified it so it wouldn't be so heavy on my quads because I noticed my quads were getting bigger than, you know, my posterior chain on my, on my legs. So I modified MAPS Anabolics and that's what I've been doing so far. And so my question is, can the clicking noise be due like to the muscle imbalance? Or is it just another factor such as uh, mobility of my ankles or hips or just my posture in general when I work out? It's 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 gonna it's welcome to getting older, Juan. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna be it's either gonna be your hips or your ankles. It's probably where it's gonna go. So feet, ankles, or hips. So I would do it's all it's mobility it's, work on both of those on a regular basis, like daily. I would do, you know, two 10, 15 minute sessions a day working on mobility in those areas. And then when you do your squats and your lunges, go lighter, go lighter for a while so you can focus on working on better connection and uh, and mobility. A couple of weeks ago on my Instagram, I, I posted a video in my garage squatting barefoot. If you turn the volume mm -hmm. up on it, you can hear my ankles and my joints, like you, and my knees okay. the entire time. Um, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't bother me. Sometimes I notice it like when I go out and I squat and I'm pretty cold. So if I didn't do like a really good job of, of warming uh, my body up and priming really well, and I kind of get into it, I, I notice that I, it, you can hear it. Uh, but it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty common. Uh, and if it's not causing any pain and you don't see any major discrepancy in your movement, in other words, if you look at your squat and video it and it looks pretty damn good, like you're moving really nice. 
I, I don't think that I would assume that it's a a muscle imbalance. You know, one of the best ways to test like a muscle imbalance, like a discrepancy in left or right, is to do something like the ninety ninety in Prime Pro. And does one side look way different than the other? Can I do this internal rotation on one side, but the other side I can't do it at all? That would that would point me in the direction that there's probably a muscle imbalance going mm -hmm. on that we need to address. Uh, there's a really good chance that you're just the, the clicking you hear is like air and the joints just kind of popping. And uh, if it's not hurting you, it's 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 pretty normal. Yeah, really just to be concerned if it's not tracking properly and you could feel if it's like an instability issue where, you know, your, your knee might travel inwards or outwards a little bit more when you're squatting. But if it's just like a noise and a clicking noise, I mean, I'm going slower and adding more tension is going to allow more support around the joints always. But um, yeah, like Adam said, it's a lot of times, like even my shoulder, I do a lot of work, a lot of uh, mobility work on my shoulder. And every now and then it clicks and it's just kind of one of those things that uh, you, you just kind of work through. But I'm always right. trying to address it at least in slowing down and, and adding and uh, priming and, and warming my body up properly. Yeah, you, you mentioned grinding. So so there's clicking and then there's grinding and also pain, right? If you feel pain and if you feel grinding, that's something to pay attention to, which is different than just popping and clicking, which, which oftentimes doesn't mean mm -hmm. anything bad. So if you are feeling grinding other under the kneecap, uh, then these are all dance moves, by the way. Yeah, not yeah. that kind of grinding, just <laughs> yeah. grinding, <laughs> popping, locking, all yeah. that stuff. All of it. Yeah, I'm, if, I'm into it. If you are feeling pain or grinding, uh, then I would focus on working on the hip, ankle, and foot mobility every single day, going lighter on your leg exercises, and allowing your mobility to improve until the point where you don't feel those things. If it's clicking and there's no pain, it, and mm -hmm. you've got good form, it's probably nothing to worry about. Did you only notice this after you put on weight during the pandemic, or has this always been kind of something you've noticed? Uh, no, I noticed it after the pandemic. I assume it was just like uh, I stopped moving as much as before, so I just assume it was like, you know, lack of movement in general. Was it like just a little bit of weight you put on, or did you get like Justin fat? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean that's that's all <laughs> in. If that's the case. We had we act, don't say and don't feel bad. Justin went through the same thing during the pandemic. We had a CGI his his body in there. I, I gained he, the COVID nineteen. Oh, wow. I'll just be honest. Yeah. yeah, his glutes were grinding. It was really. It was, yeah, it was I impressive. Mean, that, that's good though. No, I didn't put on that much weight. It was just a, a couple of pounds. I think it was main mainly muscle. Like, I uh, okay. so. But yeah, it was mainly on my on my legs though. Okay, you're probably good, man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Juan. Oh, Juan, you already have Prime Pro. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I do have Prime Pro. Okay, and you're following what anabolic right now? What are you following right now? Yeah, uh, I'm following uh, anabolics at home uh, right now. I, I I was hesitant to go back to the gym because like I knew I would go heavy, like you know, like <laughs> I would have the tendency to go heavy on like the squats and stuff like that. So. I just wanted to ask, like, you know, Mac, you're telling me to go lighter for a couple of, I mean, I would say weeks, months, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I would, so, yeah. I, mean, I would also consider moving into MAPS performance after that, too. I think that would do you some good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can do that. All, All right, right. Perfect, Juan. Juan. Right. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah, the, the clicking versus pain, you know, that's a big one, right? Oh, yeah. like, I mean, what's really, that, it's, what's that sound? It's normally, isn't it? I mean, if there's no pain, it's almost always the air in the joints or even like uh, like the muscle fibers, like kind of. Yeah, it could be a tendon popping over yeah, something. Yeah, flopping over each other. Yeah, and then it's what Connective it is. Connective tissue, not really, yeah, responding. Yeah, and then the, the pot, and in pot, like when you crack your knuckles, it's like imagine taking a suction cup and pulling it off a window. Mm hmm. That's what the sound is coming from. It's, it's it's alarming though, so I'll get you know I give yeah. it to him. But like it's it. if it hurts, or if you feel grinding, that's very different. Like yeah. grinding could be issues that'll lead to pain typically. Yeah, and I know. I mean, I, there's it's a distinct different feeling. Like there's popping, and then there's like oh man, throughout the whole rep, I feel my knee. Yeah grind almost like you need wd-40 in there or something like did that. did you hear totally that different. video that i posted a couple weeks ago i didn't oh I yeah to the sound yeah. oh yeah turn the sound up yeah, can, do yeah a few people commented they noticed it like, what's that sound yeah you could hear <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah as they come down the sound of age i do notice it though more i do if i neglect priming really well yeah. if i do a good job of like priming and then doing like some so another thing that i i'm in i've been doing lately that i like in my garage is i i have the suspension trainer uh attached to the PRX 
and I'll do like 30 like body weight squats and I use the suspension trainer to help me stay up, oh, yeah. upright yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and to kind of pinch my shoulders and I just I bust out 30 full range real deep squats and then I do some priming and I, I do that with Cossack squats I'll hold on to the suspension trainer get re try and get real deep on one side and then move to the other and get that lateral activation yeah. for me at least that's what helps the most yeah yeah <clears throat> our next caller is Andrew from Georgia what's up Andrew Hey, how's it going? Good. What's going on? Good. So um, I've been a trainer for just under a year, and uh, I started chiropractic school about six months ago. So since I started school, I haven't been able to work out as much as I did before. and I'm just sitting in class a lot, studying most of the day. So I've been putting on some extra body fat. Um, and about two months ago, I reduced my calories, cut out a lot of the junk food I could eat. Um, and I've been doing about two to three full body workouts a week, but I'm still seeing the fat um, come on. So I was just wondering what we, you guys would recommend for uh, changing training style or frequency or just focus more on nutrition. Okay. What well, one of our programs are you following? Uh, none. Well, that is your first problem. Yeah. Big mistake, <laughs> sir. That's your first, your first problem right yeah, there. I would, go, I would go MAPS Anabolic. Uh, there's a dumbbell-only version in there, so follow that. But honestly, the, the thing you can do that will have the biggest impact is your nutrition. That's like uh, Adjust your nutrition rather than trying to burn more calories or add workouts to make up the difference. And oftentimes people are like, oh, I, you know, I reduced my calories, but they don't really, they're not tracking or they don't realize how much they reduced them. That'll have the biggest impact. There's, I mean, cutting your calories appropriately will do more to get you lean than adding additional workouts at this point. Uh, uh, another suggestion. So this is actually uh, close to home for me right now. In fact, uh, Katrina and I were talking about this last night. Um, she was like, Adam, you're fat still. Yeah. 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 So I've been, uh, I've been intentionally trying to lean out. So I've, I've tightened my diet up really well. I'm, I'm consistently training about three, four times a week. Um but I cannot, I cannot get over how sedentary uh, I've become over this last year, and I think that was a lot of where, what the job is 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 changed to. I have a, a commute now. Uh, I sit at home a lot, um, and I just I, I'm not getting the regular activity that I was. And so, even though my diet is cleaned up and and, and looks ideal as far as the balance, and I'm not over consuming, I'm still not eating in a deficit enough for my body to really lean out. But then I'm also in this crazy predicament of, wow, well, I'm not eating very many calories. If I reduce my calories much more then I'm also going to have to, I'll be missing my protein target and I want to maintain my mass. So it's become very important for me to make sure I get out and get like an hour to two hours of walking throughout the day. And so, you know, that is a must for me. Otherwise, uh, I'm not moving enough to really drop and lean and I'd have to reduce my calories to a number that I don't like. like I don't like being in the low two thousands for a guy, my size, I should be consuming a lot more calories than that. So I've just opted to make sure that I get out and get that hour to two hours of walking every day. So that may be a suggestion depending on where your calories are. So, uh, I would, I would want more detail if which way I would drive you. I mean, you could potentially, I don't know, you could be eating 3,500 calories and I'd say, well, then Andrew, let's just reduce your calories by 500 calories, and I bet you start to lean out. But if you are like me in the mid 2000s, uh, which isn't very high for me as it is, and I'm and I'm training and I want to lean out, I don't want to go down to 2000. So instead, I'll, I'll pick up more activity. So where where would you say you are? I I know a couple of years ago my maintenance was around 3000, um, and I dropped I think I'm around like 2,700 right now because I didn't want to drop too much because I've got that hard gainer type of body. So I was worried about just um, losing muscle because I'm not eating enough. But um, yeah, right now I'm probably around 25 to 2,700. So a very similar what, predicament as me. Yeah. What does your uh, macro ratio look like? Um, like one to one for protein uh, and, and body weight. So I'm trying to get around 200 grams of protein and then like 20% fats, the rest carbs. Yeah. How tall are you and how much do you weigh? You said 200. Six, four, around 200. Oh my God. Okay. You're exactly me. Okay. You're, li you're literally, your body, your, I am your, you. yeah, your body type, 
your 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 current calories and your current problem is the same as mine right yeah. like literally right now I'm, so the answer for myself that i'm doing is just that i don't want to i don't want to cut any more calories than where where you're currently at or where i'm at and so and i know that i'm just sedentary and so i don't know if you look back just like a week or two you you'll see on some of the old episodes well, just recent episodes i'm wearing my fitbit again i was doing that for the last two weeks because i wanted to get an idea of where i was i don't know if you use tools like this this is where i find this extremely valuable and i'll look at it and go oh wow it looks like for the last two weeks i'm averaging you know 3500 to 6000 steps a day on average so then right away i know okay well my new goal is i just got to at least get 10000 every day some days that only requires a half hour walk some days it requires an hour and a half walk so uh, I think that's a really good place for you to start uh, mm -hmm. if you want to see yourself leaning out without having to significantly reduce calories. Gotcha. Yeah. And your weight training, like, so you do what, two to three times a week. And is it total body, full body workouts? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. Full body workouts, just dumbbells at home. Um, and since most of my classes are just online, so sometimes I split up my workouts, do a little bit in the morning, finish in the afternoon. Yeah, so I mean, in terms of muscle preservation, uh, like really focusing on your strength training and keeping that going with, uh, well, we always suggest our best program for that is MAPS Anabolic. Uh, and that's something that I would definitely suggest in, in terms of like also, uh, you know, adjusting your, your calories, making sure like the nutrition part is solid because that's really what's going to control most of the body composition. But to preserve muscle, uh, you know, to stay to stay in that strength training phase would be ideal. Yeah. All right, Andrew, we're going to send you MAPS Anabolic if you don't have it, okay? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. No problem, man. Thanks for calling. You know, something that's that a lot of people don't realize is the type of volume and training that requires you to build muscle is not at all the same kind of training of volume that is required to keep muscle. Mm -hmm. You can get away with way less training to maintain your physique that's the than you did. It. Yeah, so well, if you're like pushing your body and you're building muscle and building strength and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy because of work or school or you know other circumstances and you back off on it. I mean, you could literally cut your volume down by half and you'll probably m lose minimal uh, strength and muscle. I mean, keeping muscle is a lot easier than building it. He's literally in the exact same position. He's I not as big as you, though, right? He's only 200 pounds. You're, yeah, you're so like 200. Yeah, he's a, he's a little leaner. So he's a hard gainer, mm -hmm. so sure. for sure, it sounds like. I mean, if you're at 200 pounds, 6'4", so I'm obviously I'm more like 230 and 6'3", six, six, so mm -hmm. I'm thicker. More, more. So he's probably concerned about reducing calories just like I was. You reduce calories on a guy like that. And he's going to drop down below his protein intake for his muscle. He doesn't want to lose that. So I just was literally having this conversation with Katrina. And I was like, man, I'm normally would be leaning out based on, I know what I'm eating. I know where my, my maintenance normally is, but it's just, I'm not moving. Yeah, being enough. sedentary. That's the hardest thing. It's to, a, it's a motherfucker. <laughs> deal with, right? And people don't, you don't, you don't calculate it like this. But you don't think about, you know, we, in your head, if you, if you do a hard training session, let's say four or five times a week, you're like, I'm active. I'm active. Yeah, you you nice. think that way, but what you don't realize is that one hour of hard training may burn 400, carry you so far. 400 calories or so. Well, it doesn't matter because in 10 hours a day you're sitting. Well, my, where I'm getting at here is, you know, 6,000 steps of walking in the day. Okay. Which is probably a good hour and a half to two hours of walking ends up being more calories burned in just that. So you're, you you don't really compute that or realize that when you're when you're training you automatically right. just assume you're an active person you just have to be extra uh, conscious of any opportunity to get up move around that's right and that's really got to be it our next caller is Harry from Australia Harry what's going on man hello how's it going good good, good. how yeah. can we help you awesome so um I just had a question regarding uh, like my one rep max calculations on the uh, powerlifting program. So I recently bought the uh, the strength and powerlifting programs, and I got to the you know there's like an intro section, there's a strength portion, and then there's the peaking portion. And I was in the intro portion, and I was doing the you know at the end of the three weeks, you take your eight rep uh, max on the last set of the exercise, mm -hmm. and essentially. I was heading towards that point where I got it and I put my eight rep max in and the numbers that were coming up for my one rep max were quite low 
below what I knew my one rep max was. So like uh, squats, for instance, I think my one rep max came up at like 80 something kilos. And I, I just recently done, oh, you guys are in pounds. So it's, it's like times 2.2 or we, something. We can do math. But, that's all right. <laughs> okay, cool. cool, cool. Um, it's so it's like 80 though. something kilos, but I know I'd, I'd done like a few weeks earlier, I'd done like a hundred kilos for, or 220 pounds for, for five. Um, so I knew I was in a little bit of a, like I peaked when I'd done that. So it was maybe a bit lower, but I was basically wondering, do I need to sort of manually adjust those calculations to reflect what my one rep max actually is? Or should I just trust the process and just maybe like not exhaust my central nervous system and, and, uh, do something closer to what well, the, the Harry, program Harry, is reflecting. Harry, both both options are are possible. Okay, so mm-hmm. first of all, this is this is one of the greatest challenges of of creating digital programs for millions of people is that there's always going to be this individual variance, and uh, when you use you know calculators that are built on the internet to hopefully mm-hmm. work for most people, it's not always going to work for everybody. Especially eight reps too, which is something we yeah. agreed for. It was more, you know, towards the beginners that were introducing them towards powerlifting. So there's some other calculators that might be a little more accurate in terms of, you know, coming up with your one. That's right. Max. And to Justin's point, the, the, and the reason why we went with this type of a calculator was for that. We knew that we were going to attract people that have never powerlifted before, and we'd always <laughs> rather them focus more on form and technique and maybe a little bit lighter towards their, their one rep max. Then we're here we are talking to someone like you who's a little bit more uh, advanced, understands it is. So you, one, yes, you could totally adjust it up because you know your one rep max better than the obviously the average person getting introduced to this program. And then there's the other option of actually just following it to a T all the way through and seeing what the potential benefits are. Because one, yeah. of, one of the things I've seen with some of my powerlifting friends that have gone through our routine is that they too run into the same thing. Oh, I could do more. And I've told them like, you know, just follow it all the way through and tell me what ends up happening at the end. And sometimes what ends up happening is they actually end up surpassing some of their previous best because maybe what their body actually needed was to not be pushing that right. hard all the time. Yeah. And, Focusing and on practicing and like mastering the technique of it. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. so yeah. either option's okay, you know? Yeah, that's great advice. Um, I would agree 100%. You know, one rep max calculators are almost always off for someone like me. Uh, I... I lift way more in the low rep ranges than the calculations will give me, and I'm less in the high rep uh, calculations that they'll give me. I have really good low grinding strength and really, kind of, I guess, poor in comparison, higher rep uh, type strength. So these yeah. are very – Which gen- seems to happen to me more in like in like the posterior chain and – like glute dominant movements, I yeah. seem to be able to do much higher weight in the low rep ranges, whereas like my bench press reflects a little bit yeah, uh, closer. It, they're, it's mm-hmm. general, it's rough estimates. So, you know, you can, you can adjust them for your specific body. But, you know, Adam gave great advice. Like sometimes, mm-hmm. I remember I did this once where I, I read this routine. It was an old Soviet style workout uh, philosophy where you pick the weight that let's say was, you know, you, you could do 10 reps with that was 90% intensity. And then for like two months, you always only ever do 10 reps, even though as I, I obviously got stronger and it felt like it was 80% and then 70% and then 60%, I always mm-hmm. did 10 reps. Then at the end of two months, I went and tested my strength and I got stronger than I would have had I always tried to push 90%. In fact, if you've been working out for a while and you're relatively advanced, I think you should go in that route. I think you should go in the route of less mm. less is more. And then at the end of the program, test your strength and see where you're at. I think you might be surprised mm-hmm. at just uh, how strong you've gotten. I can always run the program again too. Like, That's right. like what's losing? I'm not losing 12 weeks of my life. Right. The other thing I was thinking <laughs> is, you know, because I did, like, I've missed the time a little bit, but I wanted to peak in this program to do like a jujitsu competition. And I'm thinking if I'm like completely frying myself every workout and going to what my like true one rep max is, then yeah, that's, am I just going to overtrain and not be able to do as much to- as the other things I like to do? Yeah, you know? that's that, to- that was another thought. Yeah, totally different answer now. So uh, yeah, even more reason yeah, to, to what, back off. What rank are you in jujitsu? Uh, 
purple. Oh, you're a purple belt. Well, you should know better. You should know that max strength is probably not the most beneficial for jujitsu. I mean, for jujitsu, no. I would do, uh, you know, I would do like a maps performance uh, yeah. type of routine. That's mm. going to make you. That's going to give you much better performance. I mean, you're going to get uh, good performance from powerlift too, especially as a mm -hmm. purple belt. You're probably training at least three or four days a week, so you're able to integrate it. Strengthen but, your end range of motion. But yeah, I would go. I would do like a maps performance for jujitsu, especially if you're going to compete. Right. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're going to do a competition because you know you know mm -hmm. as well you know, mm -hmm. you know better than anybody. But I mean, you've probably been training for at least three or four years if if you're at a at a purple belt level. Um, you know, strength is important, but how, but if that strength can't be applied in different directions with different tensions mm -hmm. and lots mm -hmm. of mobility, it's not very useful in jujitsu. So I yeah, would do, especially I, if it's like, if, especially if it's, uh, like gnawing into your training time oh, or, yeah, or, or yeah, energy, of you know, yeah, but yeah. I guess the reason I, I picked the, the power lift program was because. Well, firstly, like simplicity, because I'm using like a, I don't know what sort of gyms you guys have there, but like a really commercial gym that has pretty basic equipment. I don't have any like balls to throw yeah, and yeah. that sort of stuff. Well, so I was just like, I just thought I'd keep it like really simple deadlift squats. And, and I've definitely noticed it has like improved my game because I used to just do like a lot of yoga and calisthenics and that definitely helped, but just adding some oh, yeah. powerlifting movements in yeah, it, to a certain degree has, has definitely any, helped. Any, look at you, it, comparing yoga to any strength training, you're going to mm. see, you're going to see better uh, results with strength training. I would love, I would love to see him do suspension training, dude. suspension or maps with, performance. And here's yeah. the deal. Maps performance. Right, okay. You could do maps performance with basic equipment. It's not, it doesn't require lots of weird equipment. So I'll send that to you if you don't have it. If you're going to yeah, compete, awesome. if you're going to compete in a tournament, do that. But also modify it. If you're doing jujitsu four days a week, I wouldn't do more than one or two days a week of uh, of strength training. I wouldn't do any more than that because right, okay. then you'll be doing uh, too much. So we'll send that over to you. And also, I appreciate you calling it. I know you're calling from down under, and it's like what is it three a.m. Yeah, yeah. three a.m. over there. So we yeah, appreciate yeah, it was you. All good. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Th <laughs> thanks for calling, man. Pleasure. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, that you know, good question. But he threw in the jujitsu at the end. Yeah, and it that changed, just makes the whole conversation. Yeah, it changed everything. It's like yeah. if you're going to compete in jujitsu, and he's like, I, I, well, I noticed an improvement, and it's like, well, yeah, you were comparing it to yoga. Yeah. <laughs> well, even of course, even our suggestion with performance is uh, is a bit much for someone who's doing jujitsu four he's, days you a week. You have to cut it back. Yeah. You'll just have to cut it back. Right. I yeah. mean, I mean, what two days a week maybe of performance? Max. Then? Yeah. Max. I would even that's do why, one day a that's week. That's why I the suspension trainer. I just feel like because it's uh, it it promotes the the deep range of motion and I uh, and stability and and you're still going to get strength from it and it's not as taxing mm -hmm. as like a, a barbell type of a mm -hmm. program. I feel like would really complement uh, his jujitsu. It'd be really interesting to see how he how he did with that. Yeah, totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out the free stuff that we've put together for all of our listeners. Lots and lots of free written information, extremely valuable. Again, it's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam. If you find yourself in this state where you're like, I'm kind of losing motivation, I'm losing a little bit of steam, is to change your goals. It's not just changing your goals. I want to be very clear. That's part of it, right? It's your it's, mindset. The mindset's the important thing. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, that is the hardest part of this whole conversation yes. because the, the inevitable is 